Well, hey everyone, thank you for joining us again for video blog number four. Today I am joined by Dr. Margaret Otley. Did I say that right? You said it right, pronounced like you, Otley. Otley, <laughs> Woo, I said it right. Well, welcome, thank you so much for joining us today. So let's go ahead and jump into the first question. Um, so how did you get involved in the Black Women in Sports Foundation? Wow. Um, I was fresh from Atlanta, Georgia, straight out of Spelman, came straight into a Temple University and wanted to study sports psychology and do great things to, to all people. And um, inside of, of my high, you know, with a Spelman education, I came in, I'm sitting in most of my my classrooms, I'm the only black person, <laughs> one or two of us. Um, it's It was such a great program, but um, Professor Green was, I think, the, the only black professor in, in the department. And um, it was a, a, a natural attachment, a natural uh, um, um, a connection and uh, she was you know, of course she was doing the um i think the nysp program national youth uh, sport program through the ncaa at that time i joined her as on staff there for, for the summer programs and then it was um black over the sport you know foundations after school program i just got in as a you know wanting to have practical experiences you know as a sport psychologist and training uh -huh. <laughs> so she provides you know you know professor green would provide you know opportunities well, that's amazing. so i was running you know i am doing the, the educational psychology part of the program itself with that saying who is an influential black woman mentor or role model that has influenced you in your life hey i have many but right now the one who is holding me down is my sister Aww. you know and she's a trinidad oh you know? shout out to your so, sister Oh, Sister Evelyn, shout out to you. I love you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, she's, she's right there, you know, um, uh, it, because because she supplies me with, with things I need right now. You mm -hmm. see, for us as Black women, we could climb the ladder. Um, I, I'm a senior professor. Um, I'm well-respected in my field. I'm doing a book chapter now, and, and they invited me to write a chapter uh, mm. that in a book that is called Experts' Approach to Sports Psychology. Mm. So now, you know, I'm, I'm validated by the okay. system. By the system. But we are always, inside of all of that, we're looking for validation within our own selves. And, and still asking the question beyond the who am I, but is what am I? Mm. And my sister, Evelyn, what she, you know, every time I, I have from, from physical ailment, you know, she will get on a plane and come over here. And she's my elder. She's like in her 70s. Wow. <laughs> she will get here and take care of me. Mm. You know, it's that kind of walk the walk. And, but... For me, I am in a, a place in my life where I'm seeking to, to grow inside of my own spirituality. Mm. So she is my, my shepherdess. She's, you know, <laughs> she's my guru. You know, I could ask, uh, I, I, you know, and I'm sure we'll talk about it, but in my daily re routine, as I prepare myself, you know, to, to, to embrace the day, in the morning, you know, I will read and, and sometimes I will read scriptures that I don't quite get the meaning of. I make a phone call and I'm like, break this down for me. And she will hit it right on point. She right. will back to the scripture and she'll bring it to you to, you, to the, with the gospel. She will give it to you in Revelation. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> I'm ready to go. Oh my God. You know, as the great Bob Marley would say, you don't let the system get into <laughs> Why is the Black Women in Sports Foundation important right now? Right now? Well, it was always important. We've always been doing our thing. That's you true. Know? Yeah, yeah, digging deep <laughs> and, and staying in the trenches. So let me make that clear that this is not a, a, a new thing that just got popped That's right. 
You're right, Dr. Ali. You know, right. I've been a grad student I, in the in the 90s, 1994. Ooh. I joined. Yes, I'm I'm that young. Um, <laughs> 1994. You got me excited now, right now. You know, because Black Women's Sport Foundation was already running when I hey. uh, uh, hey. Uh, in 1994 when I joined Temple University. You know, so. Yeah. They were a part of my mentoring, you know, and 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 raising me up. So and and their mentoring, you know, we have the Nikki Frank. It was also there, you know, and she head coach, still the head coach for Fenson at at um, at um, Temple University. They mentored like they were there in the day to day. Wow! So you have nowhere to live. I lived in, 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 in Dr. Frank's apartment. Wow. <laughs> you know? So Tina Sloan Green, she was always there. So they mentored in a way where it, it wasn't just do this and do that and giving us tasks and experiences. They were involved in, in our lives. Mm. So they raised me. You know, every time I talk about being an Olympic level sports psychologist, I have to always have them inside of my of my narrative so wow. it's always been there you know the relevance was always there for a, a young girls and, and women in all of our programs yeah. so presently with all of the you know the civil the civic injustices and and all that we are doing right now it is it it seemed like it is even more relevant but we were always struggling. We were always sidelined. We were always, you know, to the bottom of the, the you know, of, of, you know, of everything, you know, health wise, education wise, you know, opportunities. You still don't see, you know, at the highest levels, a lot of black coaches and a lot of, you know, and women and black women inside of the mix and administration. Um, and, uh, you know, so, Black Women in Sport Foundation always did that. They were always the support. They were always that go-to for for that connection that you needed to have to see to find people that look like you that could give you that inspiration to keep on fighting and keep on moving on. Wow. Dr. Ali, you're dropping knowledge right now, and I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm not ready to drop my mic though. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when I drop the mic. Let's go. <laughs> How do you personally deal with your mental health? I know you just basically just said a little bit about mental health and um, that especially being able to know how to win and lose. It takes a toll. So how do you personally deal with your mental health? Um, my my um trick my um <laughs> temptations are everywhere. I am I am every woman. I'm every woman. So <laughs> I, mean, I I get. Um, yeah, I'm Caribbean, so we sing a lot. You know, yeah. Calypso, soca, reggae. You know, we oh, sing yeah. a lot. I'm right? Nigerian, so I, you know, Afro beats all day. There you go, and I'm deep inside of my culture. You know, so um, I, I, I struggle. My internal struggles are really um, it's every day. Hmm. I open my eyes, and uh, I know that I, my mind could fast forward somewhere and you know fast forwarding is, is associated with anxiety mm -hmm. yeah oh mm -hmm. i can open my eyes in the morning and i can go into something that happened in the past and it could impact my energy right which is uh past is associated with depression mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. for me i'm struggling here and there and sometimes both of them will help me at the same time right so I really, um, being in the center, that, that what we call that optimal zone of functioning is where we, you know, I, I, I wrestle to stay inside of. And some days are better than others. Wow. You know, wow. so um, I, I, get, I have a routine. I, I don't give, I can't give myself pep talks. That doesn't work. You know, I am a Reiki master. I, I practice energy medicine, but sometimes that doesn't work either. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I had to bring the athlete inside of me in order to, to, to understand this. So I actually, like every athlete, I, I tell, some, we say in the field, don't just think it, ink it, mm. write it down. Mm. I have my script. Mm. I get up in the morning, I know exactly what I'm going to do. As soon as mm. I get up, right? I give thanks, a quick thanks. I, I know, okay, well, this is the next routine. Um, I, I would go and, and freshen up, I, you know, take a nice long shower. And then I will go and I will kneel and pray. <laughs> I, pray. I pray a lot. I yes. pray. That's good. You need a lot of prayer. I needed, I needed the discipline, right? So that was my discipline. I know this is my routine. I get up, you know, say a quick thank you. Well, making it through the night, I mm -hmm. I go and and I I cleanse and then I know that I go and I watch the sunrise. I I pray in into the east. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I watch the sunrise and and I pray. I read a, I read some scripture, and I come down. I drink a, a glass of of water, room temperature water with lemon, <laughs> you know, in it. I do like 20 jumping jacks to help my lympho lymphatic system going. And um, I get ready for my smoothie in the morning. So it every single day. Wow. That's wow. my routine. You got a nice routine, Dr. Mm -hmm. Otley. Yeah. Nice so it's, it, it has, has preserved me. I, and I, I have, of course, I have my music going on. Exactly. Hey, Dr. Otley with the moon. <laughs> Thank you so, so, so much. It's, it's I love what you said. Um, don't just think it, ink it. Yeah, trademark yeah, it. Yeah, trademark yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I write it down. You gotta write it down. You gotta ink it. Thank right? you so because much. I appreciate it. Yeah, you forget sometimes. I appreciate it. So well, I like hope you don't have to that, right? <laughs> Drops the mic. Drop the mic, Dr. Atley. Well, thank you so much. Hope everyone that's watching really enjoyed it and was inspired because I definitely was inspired by your, by your words. Again, don't just think it, ink it. Thank you, thank you Dr. Atley. Thank you. See you guys for video blog number five real soon. Bye. Bye, you're doing good work. Thank you.